Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillier, Acting Prime Minister and Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Honorable Sean Edward, Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training. Mr. Francis Fontenelle, Permanent Secretary, Department of Finance. Ms. Karian Cadman, World Bank Task Team Leader for the Unleashing the Blue Economy of the Eastern Caribbean Project. Honorable As Alfred Prosper, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development. Honorable Moses Jabatis, Minister for Health, Wellness, Elderly Affairs. Honorable Stevenson King, Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Transport, Physical Development, and Urban Renewal. Honorable Jeremiah Nobert, Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with Responsibility for Crime Prevention and Persons with Disabilities. Mr. Augusta de Gazon, Cabinet Secretary. Mr. Imran Williams, Director of Finance. Ms. Anita Montout, Permanent Secretary of the Department of Sustainable Development. Ms. Jenny Daniel, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Wellness, and LLD Affairs. Mr. Paul Hiller, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, and Youth Economy. Ms. Suz Mrs. Suzette Louis Jean, Permanent Secretary, Department of Physical Development and Urban Renewal. Ms. Janet Bernard, Permanent Secretary, Department of the Public Service. Mr. Barmore Felicia, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development. Dr. Elizabeth Bailey, Permanent Secretary, Department of Home Affairs. Mr. Guyam Simon, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs, International Trade, Civil Aviation, and Diaspora Affairs. We also have with us Monsignor Patrick Anthony, Archdiocese of Castries. Frank Chopin, Fisheries Specialist with the World Bank. We also are with us um, Deputy Permanent Secretaries present, Heads of Departments including Chiefs, Directors, Fellow Public Officers of the Government of St. Lucia and from statutory agencies, friends and users of St. Lucia's Blue Space. A very good April 11th morning to you all. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to the official launch of Unleashing, of Unleashing the Blue Economy of the Caribbean UBEC project. So we do have a packed agenda um, ahead of us. And my name is Fabian Felix. I'm a civil engineer within the Department of Finance, and I'll be your director of proceedings. Uh, apologies on behalf of the organizing committee of this event. Uh, we are a little late in terms of the start. But Rest assured, um, this is designed to be engaging and enlightening. So please, um, you can scan through your agenda and you'll see the, uh, the, the list of um, components that will make this event um, hopefully unforgettable for you and very enlightening, um, to say the least. So to start, may we all rise as we become one in mind, spirit, and soul as we acknowledge the presence of the Almighty Lord. And I'll call Monsignor Father Patrick Anthony to lead us in prayer and remain standing. We'll, this will be followed immediately by the national anthem that will be done by Corporal Lewis of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band. Good morning to everybody. The, um, the master ceremonies that acknowledge a beautiful day, right? <coughs> by whose power? <coughs> Lord's power. So we acknowledge the Lord for this wonderful day. I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Genesis chapter 1 verses 21 and 22. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing which the water teems with that moves in it according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. We thank you, Almighty God, for your goodness. We thank you for the wonders of your creation. 
If the Lord does not build a house in vain with its builders' labor, if the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain does the watchman keep vigil. As we gather today, Lord, to thank you for the gift of the sea and all activities associated with the sea. We lift up this project before you, Lord God. We lift up our people in our region and especially in St. Lucia. Bless the work of our hands, which is your work. May everything we do today and onwards read down to your great honor and glory and the well-being of your people. Papa, dirigez nous à la manière qu'à pleurer. Bénissez-le ici, bénissez le gouvernement, l'opposition, bénissez tout le peuple. Quand vous faites prier, papa, non, en non, non, c'est Jésus-Christ, en l'île de l'île Saint-Esprit, ainsi soit-il. And we pray in the manner that Jesus, our Savior, taught us to pray. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Papa and Corporal Lewis, for this. Um, nothing can be more heartwarming than an affectionate welcome for an event like this. I can go on and on and tell you about the blue economy and blue spaces, and I think we all can relate because we all use the beaches. We all are involved in one way or the other with the the blue features, the blue resources that the, the Lord God has blessed us with. And true to being islanders, we all enjoy this on possibly a daily basis for some of us. So I'll not go on further. The agenda will have speakers who will give you more insightful information about the blue economy and the blue spaces that St. Lucia has and how this project is designed to make good use of those resources. But I'd like to call on right now Mr. Francis Fontenelle, who is a permanent secretary within the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development, and Youth Economy, to give the welcoming uh, remarks. A pleasant good morning to everyone. Um, Please allow me to adopt the protocol already established. That notwithstanding, I would like to recognize the presence of Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire, Acting Prime Minister and Minister for Tourism, Investments, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Honorable Sean Edwards, Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and vocational training. Ms. Kerry Ann Cadman, who is the World Bank Project Task Team Leader. Other members of Cabinet, permanent secretaries, and heads of departments. It is, with, it, is, it is with immense pleasure that I welcome all of you here this morning to witness and participate in the official launch of the Unleashing 
the Blue Economy of the Caribbean Project, also referred to as the UBEC Project. What is the Blue Economy, one might ask? And I'm certain that you will be provided with many definitions in the course of the deliberations here this morning, all equal in meaning. But from my vantage point, the blue economy is defined, and I quote, as the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, improve livelihoods and jobs while preserving the health of the ocean ecosystem. The ocean is seen as the next great economic frontier, with numerous, with numerous ocean-based industries emerging and quickly growing at geometric speed and pace. I don't think we appreciate how fortunate we are to be surrounded by two bodies of water, that is the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The last I checked, approximately 44 countries are landlocked. Residents of those countries have little or no access to a beach that some of us, including myself, take for granted. Sometimes I wonder, do they have fishermen in those countries? But then again, some of those countries have lakes that can possibly substitute for an ocean. But not quite, as we may all agree. For islands like ours, a sizable number of the things we consume, purchase, and or sell come from the ocean. The ocean is part of our livelihood, an important part of our culture and tradition. It inspires us, and in many cases, contributes to our success, whether it be financial and otherwise. Therefore, we should appreciate that the ocean is a critical component of the global economy and that it represents a vast range of possibilities and opportunities that can be leveraged in enhancing the economic growth and development of our island. The fisheries and tourism sectors together contribute significantly to our national economic activity and they are an integral part of the blue economy. Small island developing states like ours face a myriad of challenges. However, we must be discerning enough to recognize the opportunities that the blue economy presents for which we can take advantage. We should assess scientific initiatives, policy advice, and financing that would allow us to take advantage or take greater advantage of the possibilities that a more sustainable blue economy presents. That would include, but not limited to, more jobs, cleaner energy, improve food security, and enhance resilience while contributing to the protection of our oceans, our coastlines, and our inland water sources. In the area of financing, we will sp we speak of the Blue Bond Framework, which is an initiative that the government of St. Lucia is currently pursuing that is expected to provide fun funding to some key initiatives. Your invitation to this function is premised on the notion that the Ministry of Finance is convinced that you are, you are an important partner on this journey, which we started over two years ago with the UBEC project, sorry, when the UBEC project was conceptualized. I want to thank all of you for your contribution to the UBEC project thus far, as well as your commitment to the implementation of, the, of SDG 14, which speaks to conserving and sustainably using the ocean, the ocean seas, and the, mar the marine resources. Our mission under this UBEC project is to create the balance between conservation and sustainable use of the ocean's resources. As a small nation, we adhere to the belief that sustainable ocean action should be the cornerstone of national policies. Thus, under this project, we are, only, we are not only going to fix some of the problems that COVID left 
behind, but also to address some of the issues and concerns that predated COVID, including wastewater management, unhealthy diets, poverty, and unsustainable practices. The Ministry of Finance recognizes that any effort geared towards obtaining a sustainable ocean economy must be multi-sectoral in nature, encompassing agriculture, tourism, the environment, and in particular, waste management. Together, these sectors contribute significantly to St. Lucia's economic growth, and their spillover effects are far-reaching. We are part of a global movement where everybody is doing more to protect our oceans. More institutions and countries are finding ways of responses are engaging in recycling. More fishermen are engaging in sustainable fishing practices. We are all here this morning because we want to be part of that experience and to do more to protect our oceans while we ensure that our country maximizes the opportunities that exist within the blue economy space. The Ministry of Finance will continue to work with partners like the World Bank, who have been very instrumental in assisting us obtain access to new financing facilities for our country, thereby creating new economic opportunities for our people. We remain committed to using the resources under this project to accelerate social and economic development. Ministers of government, permanent secretaries, officials from the World Bank and the OEC OECS, public servants and representatives from the Solid Waste Management, Management Authority, I want to welcome you once again to this morning's proceedings and thank you for your participation. And we look forward to your continued support as we unfold the activities under this UBEC project. I thank you. Thank you, P.S. Fontenelle, for this introduc introductory and welcoming remarks. Um, I hope you got a snippet of what's ahead of you, uh, because P.S. did touch on a lot of um, issues and concerns about our blue spaces. Um, the, the fact that SDG 14 speaks about sustainable use of our oceans and life, life below water, as a matter of fact. Um, the next presenter, um, I humbly present the next presenter, and I deliberately didn't introduce her um, as part of my protocol list because she's tasked for responsibility for carrying out this project. So far, she's assembled a team of competent individuals, knowledgeable around blue spaces, blue economy, agriculture, fisheries. And um, I think it was Roosevelt, 26th president of the United States, who said the most important part of any, or the most ingre important ingredient in any formula, formula is getting along with people. And she's learning because this project is so outreaching. It's, it, it, it encompasses a lot of other agencies that are integrally involved in blue space management. And she's de dealing with this feature quite well because so many agencies here I see so many faces that will be called upon will be consulted uh, will be required to give input and vice versa because it's a two-way um, symbiotic relationship so without further ado I'd like to call on Mrs. Shermaine Closel project manager of UBEC to give the project overview so please sit tight, and she will give you the details of the project way more than I can. So please listen attentively, and Ms. Mrs. Closel, the podium is yours. Thank you, Fabian. I would like to recognize the protocol already established, and I wish to acknowledge those specifically the presence of the acting Prime Minister, Dr. Honorable, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire, Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, and other esteemed ministers. I would like to also recognize Mr. Francis Fontenelle, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Youth Economy, and other Permanent Secretaries. Uh, Ms. Carrie Ann Cadman, Team Task Leader at the World Bank with responsibility for this project. Heads of departments, specially invited guests, colleagues, good morning. 
It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the launch of this project, Unleashing the Blue Economy of the Caribbean. But what is the blue economy that we're promising to unleash? Our definition is very consistent with what was just offered by the PS. Our island, like others in the Caribbean, has traditionally depended on the extractive use of coastal and marine resources for economic growth. The key difference between the blue economy approach and these other traditional approaches is the provision of greater support to other ministries and other entities who are fostering more strategic, more responsible development by focusing on not just progress, but also on preservation. In a nutshell, sustainable development. For this reason, such an approach, a blue economy approach, integrates key elements that support sustainability and also utilizes innovation where possible. The blue economy approach is also cognizant of the impact of climate change and therefore incorporates climate change adaptation. This project will involve primarily two sectors who have traditionally operated in the marine space, namely tourism and fisheries, but also importantly will include Solid Waste Management Authority because of their very important role in maintaining the health of the ecosystem. All of these sectors have a very significant contribution to make to the blue economy. As regards the project, UBEC is a 15-year project of which the next five years represents phase one. It is funded by a mix of IDA loan credits and Pro Blue grant funds totaling 29 million US dollars. Of this, 10 million US dollars is earmarked to support the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development to address the critical threat to food insecurity in St. Lucia. This project was identified as the mechanism for support from the World Bank in the, in the event of a national crisis, and in this case, that would be food security. You will therefore hear references to interventions and activities within the sector which form part of the project but are not necessarily part of a blue economy definition. So yes, we are complex, but we are strategic and systematic in our approach. Perhaps now would be a good time to invite you to view a short video presentation that will better describe the objectives and the implementation strategy of the overall project. Nestled within the picturesque island chain of the Eastern Caribbean is a 238 square mile gem, St. Lucia, known for its pristine blue waters, lush tropical vegetation, and charming and hospitable people. Over the past few decades, tourism has attained the impressive position as St. Lucia's main economic driving force. The island also maintains a vibrant agricultural sector, which produces quality bananas and a variety of other crops. St. Lucia also boasts of a thriving fishing industry, which is the main economic driver of many rural communities. With both tourism and agriculture being intricately connected to the environment, the waste management sector has been integral in ensuring that sustainable practices are adopted to protect protect vital natural resources. Recognizing the significant interconnectedness of these three sectors, the government of St. Lucia, through the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and the Youth Economy, with funding from the World Bank, initiated the unleashing of the Blue Economy of the Caribbean UBEC project. UBEC is also being implemented in neighboring islands of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada, with the OECS Commission serving as the overall project implementation unit, PIU, for the three islands. With effect from January 22, 2023, UBEC aims to stimulate economic recovery in St. Lucia by supporting marine and coastal resilience within the tourism, fisheries, and waste management sectors. UBEC was selected as the mechanism for the implementation of the crisis response window, which which was enacted to provide support to the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development to address the emerging risk of food insecurity. These objectives have been fast-tracked through the activation of a Crisis Emergency Response Component, CERC, which has a one-year time frame ending October 31st, 2024. The UBEC St. Lucia Project Implementation Unit, PIU, 
was formed in September 2023, comprising a team of 14 experienced professionals with wide-ranging areas of expertise. To date, the team has initiated a number of activities under the CERC in close collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture, and more specifically with the Department of Fisheries, the Banana, Crop and Propagation Units, and the Veterinary and Livestock Division. Over the past five months, the UBEC PIU has implemented the following initiatives, amongst others, the distribution of 34,000 bags of fertilizer to banana and crop farmers throughout the length and breadth of St. Lucia, thereby strengthening food security through enhanced agricultural production. The allocation of 500 water tanks to various livestock farmers in an effort to support increased production to meet local demand. The initiation of a farm worker program whereby farmers will receive labor support on their farms at no cost to them to assist with increased production demands. The establishment of fish aggregating devices, FADs, to increase fishing efficiency while lowering carbon footprint and the strengthening of safe handling practices for the storage of fish to ensure freshness and quality. Additionally, UBEC aims to propel significant impact in the tourism sector through the implementation of one, the revision of the national tourism policy to account for the expanded range of global impacts and climate change realities. Two, upgrading of the selected facilities and amenities in the Marigo area to expand the opportunities for tourism-related livelihood activities. Three, establishment of a dive park facility to further diversify the island's marine tourism product while also providing opportunities for increased revenue generation for blue economy workers. In the waste management sector, the project will focus on one, the review and revision of the solid waste management policy to account for the increased vulnerability of the island's environmental landscape attributed to climate change and other natural and man-made impacts. Two, the undertaking of a feasibility study for the selection and design for a new landfill site with the goal of fostering the ease of transition when the current landfill reaches its full capacity. Over the next five years, UBEC is on a mission to drive forth economic growth in the blue economy through capacity building, training and knowledge sharing, financial assistance, policy formulation and review, and most importantly, grassroots engagement, which impacts the everyday blue economy worker. We invite you to join us on this journey. Let us unleash the blue economy of the Caribbean, one blue wave at a time. For more information on UBEC, visit our social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook at ubec.slu or send us an email at info.ubec at gmail.com. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, this in no way captures the full description of the project and all the many activities. So this is just a snippet. It's enough to give you a sense of what we aim to do and how we aim to do it. Um, and it also just a indication there that the, while the OECS is a partner, they're not the overall um, project implementation units. They provide support and recognize synergies among the UBEC projects so that, that these efforts can be ramified across the wider membership in the Caribbean. So, now that you have had a better understanding of UBEC's mission and mandates, I do hope that my team and I can rely on you for your support in the execution of this project's activities. This is our blue economy, so let us work together to nurture, strengthen its, rela its related sectors for the greater good of St. Lucia and for our region. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Closel, for that. So I, I do hope that gives a better understanding of the project, the scope of the project, and the activities, um, yeah. the activities that have been um, undertaken thus far. And the slogan, the slogan, uh, one, what does it say? One, one blue wave at a time. Um, no pun intended there. It's, it's just strictly for project purposes and no other purposes. Uh, <laughs> yes. So. Uh, on the on the lighter side, we do have a, a small uh, a rendition, uh, and I think um, Honorable Hilaire would appreciate um, having the creatives involved in activities like this. And also, I'd like to acknowledge PSVT, 
um, of tourism here, and um, we do have a supertonic quartet. And who are they? In case you don't know, um, this is a dynamic and innovative ensemble that breathes new life into the world. I'm reading, by the way. <laughs> breathes a new life into the world of classical and contemporary music, comprising four exceptionally talented musicians, uh, most of which I know, most of them I know. Supertonic pushes boundaries and redefines the traditional string quartet experience. Each musician brings individual expertise and personalities to the ensemble, thereby contributing their distinctive voice to the quartet's collective sound. Each member also holds over 10 years of formal classical training from the St. Lucia's St. Lucia School of Music, sorry, drawing inspiration from a wide range of musical genres and styles. This group infuses their repertoire with diverse influences, seamlessly bridging the gap between classical masterpieces and contemporary composition. Ladies and gentlemen, Supertonic Quartet. Thank you, Supertonic, for that rendition. And um, there's a saying that says, um, music like this stimulates the brain. So I hope now that your brains have been stimulated, uh, we move on to the next. They do have another one. A sincerest apologies. <laughs> so <laughs> we need some more of that. So please, uh, go ahead. Sorry to cut you <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we'll be overstimulated. <laughs> Two more, okay, thank you. Go ahead with it. Thank you. 
That's it? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. Um, now that our brains have been overstimulated on a blue economy project, um, let's move on to the next presenter. I uh, will grace us with um, hopeful words of knowledge and inspiration from the agricultural sector. I'd like to call on Honorable Alfred Prosper, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development, to give his remarks. Thank you, Master of Ceremony. Having a adopted the protocol, let me recognize the presence of <clears throat> the Acting Prime Minister, Honorable Ernest Hille, my cabinet colleagues, permanent secretaries, staff of the various ministries, all the invited guests, and also Miss Curry Ann Cadman. We welcome you to our beautiful island of St. Lucia. Other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, men, let me say a pleasant good morning to you all. Good morning. Unleashing the blue economy of the Caribbean UBEC is a flagship initiative for the region and in particular the St. Lucia economy. Historically, our people have relied heavily on one of the most abundant resources at our disposal, our coastline and marine resources for livelihoods, food, and nutrition, security, and trade. The Ministry of Agriculture, as a key agency involved in the execution of the initi this initiative, expresses gratitude to the World Bank for making available financial and technical resources in support of this project objectives. We welcome the various components of the project. Component one, focused on the strengthening governance policies and capacity building at the national and regional levels is timely as we pursue policies, strategies, and actions to overcome transboundary issues such as shared fisheries, inter-regional tourism, and the coordination of initiatives to phase out single-use plastics. The effects of climate change, global, global wars and unrest, as well as the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, all have created peculiar challenges to the sector. More specifically, the work of the Department of Fisheries under the UBEC is focused on the following critical areas. One, improvement in fisheries infrastructure and facilities. Most of our fisheries facilities are constructed in low-lying coastal areas. Sea level rise and changing coastal conditions brought by the vagaries of climate change have been negatively impacting the sector. Investments will be made in redesigning <coughs> sorry, and improving current fisheries infrastructure to make it more resilient to the effects of climate change. Secondly, improvement in safety of life at sea. The International Labour Organization has categorized fishing among the most challenging and dangerous jobs as fishers interact with harsh environments. The Ministry of Agriculture has embarked on a drive to encourage fishers to adopt the vessel monitoring system. Additionally, the project will support fishers in acquiring safety gear and equipment, as well as training to improve the safety of fishers' life at sea, including support <coughs> in obtaining insurance coverage. Thirdly, improvement and diversification within the aquaculture sector. St. Lucia has seen significant growth in mariculture with 5 million U.S. worth of CMOS exports in 2020. Maintaining this emerging trend, trend demands maintenance of high quality standards of cultivation and processing. Producers can expect support in acceding to the, those standards as well as exploration of other market opportunities. The department will also assist in putting in place various plans such as disaster, disaster management plan for the aquaculture, aquaculture sector. 
other areas of focus include one, strengthening national fisheries legislation to ensure that they are aligned with international regulations and policies. Two, improvement in data collection and management so that our national policies remain science-based and data-driven. Three, supporting the modernization and sustainable use of St. Lucia's offshore and coastal fisheries, orienting them towards providing greater value for the country and coastal communities through the exploration of alternative fishing techniques. And lastly, providing gap analysis and proficiency training to address key sanitary and phytosanitary gaps and challenges facing the fishery sector in St. Lucia. Under the contingency response component of the UBEC project, St. Lucia benefited from a 10 million, 10 million US dollar loan from the World Bank for immediate use within the agriculture and fishery sectors over a 12 month period. The activities under the CERC are designed to improve food safety and security and contribute to continued transformation of the sector. Under the CERC, the ministry focused on enhancement of the following sectors. One, livestock improvement. Two, crop production enhancement inclusive of propagation and engineering services. And three, fisheries development. Livestock improvement is focused on the livestock reproduction breeding program, including the establishment of an artificial insemination lab that will support breeding programs for ruminants and swine. This is further backed up by the, introdu <coughs> sorry, in the introduction of high-performing breeds to enhance on-farm productivity. Support will be provided for pasture development and improved nutrition, including capacity building and training. Laboratory supplies are being procured under the project in support of animal health and disease diagnostics, as well as the supply of water shortages, water storage tanks towards water security for livestock production. And I was told we are going to be offering to our livestock farmers 501,000 gallon water tanks, and I was told an additional 500 water tanks would be going to our crop farmers. Under the subcomponent enhancing food security for crop production, the, minist <coughs> sorry, the ministry is supporting producers in several areas, including one, improved agricultural infrastructure, irrigation, including water tanks for auxiliary water supplies, drainage, and communal agricultural reservoirs, and protected structures known as greenhouses. Land preparation services, including procurement of appropriate tillage equipment. A farm labor support geared towards alleviating the difficulties of obtaining reliable farm labor. Training and capacity building of agricultural technicians, farmers, and other key stakeholders. Inputs to enhance production inclusive of fertilizers to improve plant nutrition pesticides for integrated pest management. The fisheries component under the CERC focuses on scaling up investments made under the UBEC project with, with emphasis on one, sanitary and phytosanitary interventions. Two, safety training and equipment for boat operators and crew. Training in fish aggregating devices, material construction and deployment and safety of life at sea interventions. The ministry takes this opportunity to thank the World Bank for its continued support to agriculture and fisheries development and enhancement. Thank you to the UBEC PIU, the Ministry of Finance and the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture who are extremely committed to the success of this project. Our collective efforts will contribute to the transformation of those of the sectors and increasing resilience and adapting to changing climate and enhancing our food and nutrition security. I thank you.
Thank you, Minister, Mr. Minister, for um, summarizing some of the work under the CERC component of the UBEC project, especially, which is a one-year window to enhance our food security. And um, there's so many ministries of government, and it's, I think it's fair to say that they all are important. However, food is extremely important for a, uh, an island nation like St. Lucia. So thank you for that, uh, Ms. Mr. Minister. Um, right now, well, I'd like to call on the Minister uh, for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training. Um, possibly one of the, another important ministry speaking and holistically about the STEM. Um, as a STEM graduate myself, I do understand the importance of his ministry and conforming to the global um, conventions that we've signed upon, um, such as COP and the Paris Agreement. So, Mr. Minister, the podium is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I was remarking to the acting Prime Minister that the magnitude of the occasion is underscored by the number of ministers we have in attendance this morning. Um, if you look at your program very carefully, you will notice that we have a lineup of ministerial speakers. Uh, Minister Prosper, according to the program, was supposed to have delivered an address. Minister Girard, who is not here with us, um, according to the program, is supposed to deliver remarks, Dr. Hilaire remarks, but for the Minister with Responsibility for Sustainable Development, I've been asked to deliver comments. <laughs> um, so this is an indication that I should not be spending too much time at the lectern, and so I will be brief. Permit me to adopt the protocol that has already been established. Um, but I must acknowledge the presence of the Acting Prime Minister and my Cabinet colleagues, Permanent Secretaries and Senior Management Personnel in the Government of St. Lucia. As a small island developing state with an extensive exclusive economic zone, boasting ample marine space, almost 27 times the size of St. Lucia, the Department of Sustainable Development welcomes the increasing focus on the blue economy and the socio-economic benefits to be derived for the fisheries, tourism, and solid waste management sectors targeted under the UBEC project. Through the Department of Sustainable Development, and in close collaboration with several stakeholders in both the public and private sectors, substantial interventions and investments have been undertaken to promote the sustainable management of St. Lucia's coastal and marine resources to ensure that a healthy ocean space is available for food security, tourism, livelihood support, income generation, and reduced poverty. I am pleased that St. Lucia has laid the groundwork for a successful transition to a sustainable ocean-based economy with support from the OECS Caribbean Regional Ocean Space Project, otherwise known as CROP, under which we established a cabinet-approved multi-sectoral national ocean governance committee, developed our first national ocean policy and strategic action plan, and first coastal master plan and marine spatial plan, which together present interventions and investments that can be undertaken in the abundant coastal and marine ecosystem systems under national jurisdiction to support the transition towards a blue economy in St. Lucia. Support was also forthcoming from UNDESA, United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, to assess existing policy, legislative and institutional arrangements, and to build capacity in ocean governance and a sustainable ocean economy, a blue economy. Maintaining a healthy ocean space is vital, considering our country's heavy dependence on the marine ecosystem for fisheries, tourism and recreation, shipping, transportation, religion, and I'm sure many of you here got baptized in the sea, aesthetics, and so much more. To ensure the conservation of our critical marine resources, efforts are continuously being made to tackle the challenges imposed by the triple planetary crisis of pollution, climate change, and biodiversity loss. Actions to address pollution were endorsed in the Marine Litter Management Action Plan, or what we in sustainable development call the MLMAP, which complements measures being undertaken by the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. 
to build our resilience and adaptive capacity to the threats associated with climate change and its impacts. St. Lucia has developed a national adaptation plan and sectoral adaptation strategies and action plans for ocean relevant sectors like fisheries, water resources and resilient ecosystems or natural resources. Currently, work is on the way through the recently launched NAP GCF Readiness Project to develop adaptation strategies and action plans for the remaining priority sectors of tourism, health, and education, all of which are relevant to our efforts to unleash a blue economy in St. Lucia. You'd have heard from speakers before me of St. Lucia's efforts regarding our first Blue Bond framework to harness the potential of blue finance for its people and for our economy. Overall, Consistent with Sustainable Development Goal number 14, or SDG 14, Life Below Water, and in Creole we say La Via Baglo, using a participatory, all-inclusive, and synergy-building approach, the UBEC project is expected to significantly contribute to creating a national culture that recognizes and therefore highly values the inescapable link between healthy oceans and human health and socioeconomic well-being. We at the Department of Sustainable Development therefore pledge our commitment and support to the project towards securing a sustainable blue economy that provides essential benefits for all St. Lucians irrespective of age or social status. And just the name itself, the blue economy. It speaks to uh, an area that we will be venturing into for the very, very first time. St. Lucia and many other small island developing states embraced economic models along the lines of agriculture and tourism for many, many decades. And we know the challenges that, that we have to face on a daily basis in relation to the tourism sector and even marketing arrangements for the crops that we produce for export. And for a very long time, we've had a resource at our disposal, the sea. And the sea space, as I would have indicated earlier, is a lot more significant in terms of quantum than what we have by way of landmass. And in that ocean lies a tremendous potential for economic activity. But we all will agree that there are so many different sectors that rely on the ocean um, for program execution and things of that sort. Tourism believes that the beaches and the sea belongs to them, and quite rightly so. The Department of Fisheries will tell you that this is their natural space, and from an environmental management perspective, we at Sustainable Development are saying that you cannot have a conversation or you can't plan anything in relation to the, the oceans if we do not have a voice to inform you as to what the best practices for sustainable development are. And so it underscores the need for collaboration, but very importantly for us as a small country, where sometimes it becomes increasingly difficult to be able to raise revenue to execute projects, we have all agreed and we've recognized that here is a resource we have at our disposal that we have to use in a very responsible way to derive economic benefits that would cause us to deliver even greater things to the people of St. Lucia. Thank you very much and I look forward to benefiting from this program. Thank you, Minister Edward, for this. And um, just to add as well, um, environmental health, the Ministry of Health might have a stake with the oceans as well, because they protect the space and they're responsible for managing um, what happens on the land and how we could affect um, our ocean species. So, so, so many different ministries are involved, so many ministers are involved, and that's why this, this event um, has the participation of several ministers from several agencies here. Um, the next speaker is... Dr. Ernest Hilaire, Honorable Hilaire, who is the Acting Prime Minister and Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. This a change? We can do both okay, all right. Excuse one second. Slight change in the schedule, sorry about that. Um, I think we'll have the Musical rendition, we'll take a break now. Um, another activity to stimulate your brains, your minds. We have Chaz here with us. Um, in case you don't know, Chaz, better known as Chaz, um, is a professional pianist who has actively been involved in the art from, for over 10 years. 
He was raised in a musical environment and was taught to play steel pan by his father at an early age. His background includes writing and performing music, both independently and in the company of orchestras, mus uh, choirs, bands, and shows. Most recently, he has been appointed, and that's very important, note that, he has been appointed as a brand ambassador for St. Lucia Carnival 2024. <laughs> that is immense. And that was done by the Carnival Planning and Management Committee. His repertoire comprises of a wide variety of musical genres, all of which have greatly influenced him. His choice of performance music encompasses soulful jazz, R&B, pop, contemporary music, soca, dancehall, and even reggae. So, Chaz, show us what you have. <laughs> Thank you, Chaz, for that performance. Um, I think we enjoyed it, and I can see you enjoyed it as well. That's <laughs> important to note. Thank you so much. Very well done. Uh, so right now, from our development partners, the World Bank, we have the 
project task team leader here with us um, in St. Lucia, uh, accompanied by her colleagues here. We have Frank Chopin, Nayan Sidak um, with her. And she's at the head table. Ms. Karian Cadman, who is the project task team leader for UBEC um, of the Caribbean region. So I'd like to call on her to give her well, remarks. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, and uh, really, let me open the greetings here. Uh, honorable uh, Acting Prime Minister, uh, honorable ministers, um, it's really quite um, flattering, and I'm quite honored to have such a wonderful presence here. Uh, permanent secretaries, and of course, uh, other illustrious guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's formal launch ceremony for the St. Lucia Ubeck Project. You've heard a lot about it. You've seen a wonderful video. We've enjoyed incredible music uh, during this very special ceremony and what I'd like to really emphasize in, in my few talking points this morning is that even though the World Bank we have now over seven billion dollars in investments in blue economy around the world it is here in St. Lucia it is here in the OSCS countries in this in this region where we have been actively and closely collaborating with you for over uh, 10 years and as we enter this phase now we're building on your ocean economy we're building on the richness of all of the work that we've been doing in collaboration with you for many, many years now. This includes with the OECS Commission. You are truly, St. Lucia is truly, at the forefront of global efforts to catalyze your blue economies, and you're leading the way in many global fora that I attend and that I represent blue economy programs worldwide. It is here from the OECS, it is here from St. Lucia that we showcase your work and your examples. And the UBEC program now, which is really a 15-year investment plat platform. We see it as upwards of $150 million over the next 15 years, that this is truly where you're showcasing to the world what does a blue economy mean, how do you catalyze it, how do you invest in order to pivot and transform your economy, not only applying those circular economy principles, but truly unleashing the living blue economy and the non-living blue economy, because they go part and parcel. You've heard a lot about uh, already from, from the previous previous speakers in terms of what those components are, so I won't go into those, and you have this beautiful video. But really, to me, at the heart of what UBEC is, it is strategic, it is innovative, it is nimble. And we've seen this nimbleness because right at effectiveness, you activated the most flexible part of your project by activating the uh, um, emergency response component. Any emergency, either a slow-burning emergency like food insecurity that you want to buffer against, um, volcanic eruptions that we've seen in your neighboring countries, um, other types of natural disasters, or any type of emergency, you can utilize your UBEC vehicle very quickly. It is a very nimble and flexible vehicle that has now been able to expand and bring in $10 million immediately to you, even before we've actually begun some of the blue economy activities. But what this does is it gives you um, a tool, it gives you a platform that is built for the increasingly interconnected world. Uh, we're seeing the mounting global poly crisis and this program gives you the tools to buffer against what's happening worldwide because we're much more closely interconnected. The sectors involved in UBEC are also interconnected. What you do in agriculture matters to your coastal region. What you do in fisheries matters to livelihoods. Jobs matter. At creating new jobs and innovating and going into that next generation of jobs. This is really at the heart of of your $29 million investment in phase one. So you have close to $30 million in the first five years to affect these changes that will really pivot this country to your blue economy pathway. We've heard a lot, and and from from our illustrious speakers uh, in the in the presentations before, I'd like to talk about just some numbers to put this in context because I think these are incredible numbers that I'm I'm delighted and thrilled to be a part of. But it really, it's an honor to work with you and to support you to realize these numbers. 
So we know today globally that the coastal and maritime industries worldwide generate 2.5 trillion US dollars in the global economy. The wider Caribbean has a blue economy valued at over 400 billion. Uh, here in St. Lucia, you are home to over 4,000 hectares of coral reefs that welcome over 60,000 visitors and generate $77 million in revenue just from your reef systems every single year. Your reef, reefs also support 35 tons of snapper and grouper fish per square kilometer. Just the beaches of Rodney Bay are valued at $64 million in terms of tourism revenue. As a whole, uh, the nation's beaches welcome over 200,000 visitors and are worth $207 million per year. Your whale and dolphin, the cetacean charters, which has 15 operators, generates 3.8 million a year. Your recreational fishing, 3 million a year. These are really impressive numbers. These are very important numbers because they put in very real terms how much revenue, how many jobs are being created based on your living blue economy. The value of your whales and dolphins, the value of your coral reefs, not just in terms of ecosystem services, but in terms of the revenue that they're generating, but also jobs. And we see this readily in, in, in Ubeck. So when we think about, you've heard about the components, you've seen the activities that we're doing, but what are the expected outcomes? What are the numbers in terms of what you're going to get at the end of the five years, right? So the expected outcomes are that we're going to be giving access to more than 6,000 households with improved access to waste, solid waste management services. Why is this important? Because with functional waste management services, you halt marine pollution, you halt plastics leakage into your coastal area, and you're able to really ensure that your tourism assets, that your natural assets, your living natural assets can thrive and that they have the stability and inherent integrity that they need for the longer term. We're going to be extending to more than 28,000 beneficiaries resilient coastal infrastructure against natural disasters, against uh, hurricanes and storms. We're supporting now through the, through the food insecurity more than 3,300 fishers and farmers uh, with improved capacity. We're establishing and managing five marine protected areas. And we're offering, with the OECS Commission at the helm, regional blue economy matching grants that are very innovative. Uh, this is six million dollars in matching grants for your micro, small, and medium entrepreneurs in the fisheries, tourism, and waste management sector. And what we're looking at is we're looking to really support, to provide an incubation facility for women-owned and women-managed businesses so that women can get into the waste management and fishery sector in ways that they haven't traditionally been for better job security and better revenue for them. So these numbers alone speak volumes as to the potential of your blue economy and exactly how you're, you've chosen to invest the $29 million in phase one to truly unleash your blue economy in partnership with your, with your neighbors, in partnership with the OECS Commission. And I'm thrilled that the World Bank is your, your primary partner in this journey. And we very much look forward to realizing your vision of a blue economy and planning out the next 10 years beyond the first five years. Let me stop there. I hope these numbers impress you and bring home to you how important this project is for, for you, for every citizen of St. Lucia, um, and how, mu how much the world is looking at St. Lucia for the lessons from your Blue Economy investments. So thank you for this platform. Thank you, Carrie Ann, for enlightening us, or well, at least me, on some of those figures that you pointed out here. Um, I never knew our beaches were, were valued or had such a significant impact on certain industries, um, like the tourism industry. So that's enlightening for me, and it's quite interesting that it's coming from the World Bank. So I guess I need to do some more reading <laughs> on my end. Um, Without further ado, um, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're a little behind schedule. Um, however, there were some changes to the program. Um, we had two um, speakers who could not be here this morning, and that's in the persons of the Honorable Prime Minister, um, Philip J. Pierre, and Honorable Wayne Girard, who's a minister within the Ministry of Finance. So to fill in, we have Acting Prime Minister, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire, would be given, I'd say, a hybrid 
approach to this presentation <laughs> because he has w w three shoes to fill, uh, <laughs> including his. <laughs> Uh, so he'll be giving the next remarks, the feature address. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller, <laughs> Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. Dr. Hiller. Thank you very much, Master Ceremony. Allow me to recognize my cabinet colleagues and senior minister, um, permanent secretaries, senior public servants, distinguished invitees, representatives of the World Bank, and of course, Ms. Cardman. Um, I think you will have to bear with me today. You'll be getting a double dose of me. Um, I came here expecting to present as Minister of Tourism, and of course the Prime Minister is out and he extends his apologies. His place was supposed to have been taken by the Minister in the Ministry of Finance, who woke up with some discomfort this morning and could not make it. So I was asked, would I be willing to abandon my presentation as Minister of Tourism? And of course I would not do so. <laughs> and I decided instead I will do both addresses. So please bear with me and please don't get bored with me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are at another major fueling juncture in tourism in St. Lucia. In the last two years, we have seen the enactment of the Community Tourism Act and the establishment of the Community Tourism Agency. With the Act and the Agency in place, we have commenced providing loans and grants to persons who wish to invest in community tourism. We are now completing community projects such as the Ancillary Bread and Breakfast, Ancillary, Ancillary Waterfront Restaurant, and the Ancillary Jetty. We have been implementing the ORTCP, which will mark a significant milestone in tourism product development. The project's been closed off in May this year. The Grusel Recreational Park, the Castries Box Park, Canaries Market, the Old Trafford Vendors Facility in Soufre, and the redevelopment of the Srozel Arts and Crafts Center. We signed earlier this year a loan arrangement with the CARICOM Development Fund that will enhance our product with the Mon Lebai, the Free Matters Shrine at the Cathedral, the Prale Seamoss Experience, and the renovation of the Denry Fish Fiesta. We have also approved the Tourism Development Act, which will provide a new legislative framework for the tourism industry with an em emphasis on inclusiveness, resilience, and sustainability. We will also embark on further product development in communities, including amphitheaters in Serenity Park, Bellevue, Viewfort North, as well as labors in Ancillary Canaries and Soufre, and the establishment of a Masha craft market. All these projects that we are undertaking are bringing together persons in the various communities to provide more opportunities for growth and, of course, to secure livelihoods. And today, again, we are about to launch UBEC, Unleashing the Blue Economy of the Caribbean, which will provide even more opportunities for development of tourism in St. Lucia. The tourism projects under UBEC are one, to design and establish an underwater dive sculpture park, two, the redevelopment of the Marigo Bay waterfront, of which I am really proud of, a comprehensive demand study for tourism transportation sector, and the revision of the national tourism policy, and of course, a further enhancement of the tourism certification program. I was really pleased to hear Ms. Cadman speak of the coral, because I was hoping there would have been another component, which is a coral restoration project. Because if you just think about it, to have 10 to 15 clusters throughout this island, of a number of young persons, say 20 young persons, teaching them how to dive, teaching them in coral restoration um, practices, that they can end up becoming underwater tour guides, they can become um, divers themselves, and it would also create employment for them throughout the country, and of course achieve the environmental objectives of restoring our coral and even establishing new corals. So if there is any possibility at all for us to have a, a coral restoration project, I think it will be a tremendous addition to, to, to this project. 
The ministry is also very grateful for the injection of US $1 million um, grant component to the blue economy for MSMEs to improve their businesses. And I believe this is a tremendous addition as it will really assist those small um, actors in the industry to be able to fulfill their potential. I believe the blue economy is of utmost importance to St. Lucia and the maritime community, and it opens the way for the implementation of a project that will certainly provide for us a rival to the extraordinary physical beauty of our landmasses. St. Lucia is well known for our extraordinary beauty, and we believe through this project the sculpture park will rival this. We are planning a sculpture park that will tell the story of St. Lucian culture, history, and festivals. And we're doing a lot of research right now. The team at the ministry, led by the Permanent Secretary, we are evaluating and examining what other countries in the region um, would have done, and we intend to be better. And I can assure all St. Lucians to look forward to the underwater sculpture park. It will probably be one of the, the most fantastic product offerings that we will have in St. Lucia when it is done. We've not decided we've not decided it's going to be one site or multiple sites, but I can assure you that you will be able to see the entire story of St. Lucia underwater through the use of sculptures. And from what the PS um, have briefed me on, we're expecting to have over 300 sculptures underwater. And of course it will also be a site for anyone in the room who's hoping to get married underwater. Uh, you know St. Lucia is one of the leading destination in the world for honeymoons and one of the leading for weddings. So we will ensure that underwater weddings will become a feature at the Sculpture Park. Whilst we focus on the physical aspects of destination development, we must give equal attention to the policy environment. The two areas under UBEC for policy development are the National Tourism Policy and the Demand Study for Tourism Transportation. These two critical activities must happen to continue building the foundation laid by the recent passing of the Tourism Development Act, which will come into force on Monday, the 15th of April. The tourism component under UBEC depicts the steadfast commitment of the Ministry to sustainable tourism. It will guide our every action from policy formulation to project implementation, ensuring that our endeavors not only foster eco-friendly outcomes, but also generate meaningful employment opportunities and contribute positively to our economy, for which we value the relationship that continues to grow with the World Bank in this regard. We look forward to continuing to work with the World Bank to further develop the tourism sector in St. Lucia. And I was extremely pleased to hear some of the data presented by Ms. Cadman, and I trust you will share it with me, as well as the Ministry of Finance. Yes. So I think they will really appreciate why we ask for more investment in the tourism sector to be able to fulfill some of those potentials that you, you point out. So allow me, Ms. Cadman, to express my deepest gratitude to the World Bank Group for the invaluable support and to all our partners for joining us on this transformative journey with these exciting projects. I can assure you that these projects will not just improve physical infrastructure, but will certainly establish sustainable livelihoods. Together we will not only achieve our project goals, but we will set a precedence for sustainable development in the Caribbean and beyond. Thank you very much. Now, that was me as tourism minister. <laughs> And I'll put on my glasses for this one. So both the Prime Minister and Ms. Honorable Girard, you know, wear glasses. So I'm going to wear glasses to, to, to do this one. As a small developing state, it is imperative that the protection of our environment, the efficient use of resources and social inclusion, remain integral parts of our development strategies if we are to have a sustainable economy. As a government, we remain committed to heightening the interventions that would lead to the protection of our environment, especially the quality of our coastal waters, the degradation of our lands and soil loss, and the quality and sustainability of our water supply and physical infrastructure.
We said in our manifesto, and we remain steadfast in achieving this. Today, we are witnessing the launch of a U.S. $90 million project, which will strengthen the enabling environment for the blue economy, economic recovery, and the resilience of selected coastal assets in St. Lucia, and provide immediate and effective responses to enhance food security in St. Lucia post-COVID-19 pandemic. We are 24 years into this new century, and in this century we have seen financial crisis of 2008, Tropical Storm Elsa and Brett, the Christmas trough of 2013, COVID-19 pandemic, but we have also achieved against all of that the strongest recovery in the ECCU, and lately even winning a gold medal at a global athletics meet. So we have rebounded well and we continue to achieve. Some of the phenomena that I mentioned earlier have changed the way we live, the way we work, and the way we think. Some of these developments have broadened poverty and unemployment and have threatened the sustainability of our country and its people. It has been and is still a hard time for many. We have those who've told us that we must slam the bricks on change. But as a government, we have progressed by doing things differently while ensuring benefits for all. It is not only about building physical infrastructure, but ensuring that the farmer, the fisher folk, the craftsman, and the small entrepreneurs are all guaranteed a decent livelihood. St. Lucia remains a resilient nation, and as a government, we continue to explore new ways to ensure that we can support our people. We are committed to putting people first, and this remains our mantra. So under this project, we will directly target our farmers, fishers, and ensure that our policies governing fishers, tourism, and waste management ensure full benefits to these target groups. That's how we've made progress since assuming office almost three years ago. With this UBEC project, and particularly the CRC component, US $10 million investment in farming, we expect to see even higher economic growth figures this year. In 2021, we indicated that we will take all the necessary remedial steps to stabilize and strengthen the economy to meet the challenges of creating jobs and wealth for all. St. Lucia's economy is now the fastest growing economy in the ECCU. In 2022, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines recorded growth of 5%. Dominica and Grenada both 5% growth. St. Kitts and Nevis 7.7%. St. Lucia 18.1%. And I will not announce the 2023 figure because I think in the budget statement to come, the Prime Minister will do so. We expect a similar outcome in 2023. And of course, in 2024, based on our projections, our tourism sector has just had its best year ever with tourism arrivals reaching 1.04 million persons. Unemployment have been cut in half since the government assumed office in 2021, and there are strong signs of recovery in every sector. What is true is that the economy is changing in profound ways, in ways that are inclusive and not just benefiting a few. Our economy is changing in a way where wealth is not concentrated at the very top, but where every St. Lucian is given an opportunity to be great. The farmer, the fisher, the tourism worker. My government believes that everyone who works hard should get a fair shot at success. Our goal is to create an economy that works for everyone, and this project is specifically designed to achieve this. Under this government, under this project, no one will be left behind. The government believes philosophically that a thriving private sector is the lifeblood of the economy, and so we must support agriculture, fisheries, and the tourism sectors. And the tourism, in an effort to reaffirm our commitment to the importance of tourism, we promise to enhance efforts to ensure that our tourism product is more reflective of our unique strengths of natural beauty, culture, and people, and that a greater share of the tourism dollar remains in St. Lucia, and we are delivering on this. The fact remains that with businesses, with export services like tourism, there is a tendency to pay higher wages. Need I remind you? that tourism last year contributed 18.2% to GDP directly. Tourism expenditure in 2022 was $2.8 billion. By investing in the tourism sector under this project, not only are we improving our tourism infrastructure, we are attracting more of that tourism dollar. 
The various policies which will be developed under the UBEC project are necessary as St. Lucia needs to align its tourism product with technological changes, industry standards, and legal requirements to ensure compliance, efficiency, accountability, and risk management to derive the full benefits being offered from that sector. My government remains committed to agriculture and the need to protect the food security of our country. We said in our manifesto that we'll implement an action plan directed at ensuring that St. Lucians at all times will have access to enough food that is affordable, safe, healthy, and meets the nutritional needs of citizens and is produced in an environmentally safe way, and we are delivering. With all the interventions under the UBEC project, we should see an uptick of local produce at our markets and supermarkets. But we must move swiftly to implement measures to ensure that none of this food goes to waste. The banana industry has become severely compromised. We therefore need to take the necessary interventions to bring stability back to banana farmers and their families. We need to move quickly to establish a task force to meet with international food and fresh produce companies with a view to re-establishing a marketing presence for bananas and other crop producers. Also, we need to seek to explore regional markets for our bananas. I am happy to note that the livestock farmers have not been left behind under this project. The construction of the artificial insemination lab and new bloodlines will augur well for the livestock sector in St. Lucia. I also know that water tanks will soon be distributed to these groups of farmers to encourage and support farmers in rainwater harvesting programs to enhance their irrigation capacity. This should greatly assist during prolonged periods of drought. And the fishing, my government did indicate in its manifesto that we shall promote fishing as a sustainable livelihood that is financially rewarding. We are delivering on this commitment by providing support to the fishers, increasing the fuel rebate from $1.50 fifty to two dollars and fifty cents. But in addition, under this UBEC project, we'll amend the fisheries legislation and legislative framework to rationalize incentives to encourage greater investment and entrepreneurship in fisheries, including tax concessions on refrigerated vehicles for those involved in the wholesale purchase of fish from local fishers. We have commenced extensive work on the various landing sites, including the solarization of some of the sites, and further allocation has been made in this year's budget to continue these works. The main weakness of the system of solid waste management lies in the heavy reliance in direct government financing operational costs. The St. Lucia, sorry, as you can imagine, <laughs> the direct with the reliance on, on government financing for operational costs for the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. The lack of a greater amount of direct financing leaves the authority vulnerable to the exercise of government priorities in the disbursement of funds from the consolidated fund. Therefore, as a government, we have ensured that projects like UBEC are deliberately, deliberately designed to address this critical gap. Therefore, under UBEC, over US $5 million have been allocated to undertake activities within the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. The following major activities are detailed design and supervision of closure of Viewfort Landfill, closure and rehabilitation of the Viewfort Landfill, feasibility study for development of a new landfill in the south of the island, design of a pilot on source separation, and to develop a waste management strategy. I have no doubt that with this project touching so many sectors, its spillover effects will be widely felt by the people of St. Lucia. So please allow me to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to the World Bank and all the professionals who have worked to make this a success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Hile, for those remarks. Um, representing two perspectives, you as a Minister for Tourism and that from the Honorable Prime Minister who's away on mission. Um, and you did touch on several key issues and key takeaways, including the, the much anticipated uh, Sculpture Park um, soon to be established for St. Lucia. And um, um, re it's really comforting to hear from you the fact that it, it, sh it will be better. 
than the rest. So that's quite quite comforting. Um, so that's an opportunity for all of you who cannot swim to start working on it. You still have some time. So it's something to enjoy, the sculpture park. Um, and also, just to touch on government's commitment, you did touch on it. And, and government's commitment appears to be in alignment with what the U, what UBEC constitute or what UBEC wants out of a project and for UBEC to be successful, especially on the areas of uh, farmers, both livestock and crop farmers, uh, fishers, and especially for the Solid Waste Management Authority. Because as you can imagine, um, land-based sources of pollution find its way to the sea. And that's what UBEC is all about, uh, managing our marine spaces. And also, this the speech by Honorable uh, Hilaire, it also touched on the importance how this project is multi-sectoral. Um, he spoke a lot about infrastructure, and the Minister for Infrastructure is right here among us. So this project will call on the various agencies to play their parts um, as key stakeholders in a project like this. So I, I, I trust the project manager will be reaching out to all those agencies to get the project ongoing, and their input is quite important. In fact, all of the agencies are important for the implementation of a successful UBEC project. Uh, at this stage, I think we're slightly behind schedule. We have one more remark or speech or comment. Um, Ms. Rosemary Pierre-Louis will be giving the vote of thanks. Um, she's part of the member, she's a monitoring and evaluation specialist within the project team. Um, I call on Ms. Pierre-Louis to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Master Ceremony. Acting Prime Minister and Minister Responsible for Tourism, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire, Ministers of Government, officials from the World Bank and the OECS, Permanent Secretaries, Deputy Permanent Secretaries, Heads of Departments, Officers from various government ministries and the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, members of the media, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon. <laughs> Good morning to you. This morning, on behalf of the UBEC project team, I wish to express our gratitude to those who have made this event possible. And I note that I'm standing in between you and refreshments, so I will try my utmost to be very brief. Acting Prime Minister and Minister Responsible for Tourism, this morning we had an opportunity to hear your plans for the Ministry of Tourism and how the activities under the UBEC project supports your ministry's vision. We express our gratitude to you for your remarks and look forward to the continued support of your ministry on this journey. In your future address, Honorable Minister, the resonating theme was inclusiveness of building an economy that ensures that every St. Lucian is given an opportunity to be great. We thank you for instilling hope in our people and for reminding us that we can achieve greatness, that we are still the fairest isle of all the earth, but that we must be responsible citizens. And let me pause to thank P.S. Donalyn Vite and the staff of the Ministry of Tourism for their support under this project thus far. Um, well, you, you may notice, it's not me alone, but I noticed that Mr. Honorable Alfred, Alfred Prosper, Alfred Prosper, you have been smiling a lot since we launched the, the UBEC project, and you have every reason to smile. You know, he, he smiles when he emphasizes the US $10 million, <laughs> yes? Uh, and he, he appears to be monitoring the monitoring of the project. <laughs> yes, so Honorable Prosper, um, you have taken the role as the minister responsible for agriculture for close to three years now, and you have served with determination and grit. Your words this morning have not only... <laughs> Your words this morning have not only demonstrated your commitment to food security, but you have restored confidence in our farmers, and they are happy with you these days, extremely happy with you. <laughs> we really do express our gratitude to the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, and please permit me to mention um, these persons who have really supported us under this project. P.S. Barrymore Felicien, thank you so very much. Dr. Melville, Dr. Oria King, Mr. Kwesi Goddard, Mr. Eloy Alexis, Mr. 
Elkano Junkie, Mr. Edwin Henry, and other officers within the Department of Fisheries, Mr. Nelson Makiba, thank you so very much. Honorable Sean Edward, please accept our gratitude for your remarks. You reminded us that we need to use the ocean responsibly. So thank you so very much. To our World Bank team led by Ms. Karian Cadman, y'all are really our Northern Star. And we express our gratitude to all of you for the direction and guidance that you'll continue to provide. Thank you. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to Mr. Francis Fontenelle, PS within the Department of Finance for your welcome remarks. And we thank you for all of the support we continue to receive um, from the corporate office, especially from your secretary. Thank you very much, PS Fontenelle. We wish to thank the general manager of the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority. Although she's not here, I know we have representatives here this morning. And we thank you all for the energy that you all bring to the project. Thank you so very much. Mr. Charmaine Closel, you, you could breathe now, OK? Um, he's risen. Hallelujah. It, it has happened. All right. Thank you so much for providing us with much information on the project this morning. And we thank you for your extraordinary leadership that you bring to the project. Thank you. <laughs> An event like this could not have happened overnight. We have been blessed on this project with a team of dedicated members. Their dedication to make this event a success deserves a round of applause. And I need to recognize Ms. Karen Piper, um, Ms. Shiran Pierre. Um, thank you so very much. I noticed that Paba would have left, but thank you very much, Father Patrick Anthony, for your prayers this morning. I want to extend our gratitude to all those who have entertained us this morning with their various talents and impressive performances. You know, when the young people misbehave, we quick to judge them. But when they do good and they become ambassadors and brand am ambassadors, we need to, you know, give them a round of applause. The NIP team headed by Mr. Howard Wells, thank you for your valuable support. <laughs> Mr. Fabian Felix, we sincerely appreciate all the assistance you have provided and for willingly agreeing to serve as master of ceremony this morning. And we want to thank you in advance because you have now officially become, you know, master of ceremony for UBEC projects. <laughs> thank you, Fabian. And we want to mention a couple of extraordinary people who made this event possible, Mr. Leeton Clovis and the IT team, Mr. Glenn Simon, <laughs> Ms. Lana LaForce. We appreciate your efforts in making this event a success. We would also like to sincerely thank the various media housings, media houses for providing coverage. Thank you to the representatives from the various ministries, and I recognize PMDU representatives. The project team recognizes all of you as important partners on this journey. For individually, we are one drop, but together we are an ocean. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Thank you again for attending this launch ceremony. Um, so this uh, ends the proceedings. Um, I hereby invite you to the, uh, the hall, the foyer. There is some goodies I was told that you can grab one or two and there should be some refreshments. So that side. Okay, so you'll, you'll see it, it's outside the door. So thank you so much and do have a very good rest of the day. Today is Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for attending.